Arillic has done something that I don't know of any other manufacturer doing right now, and it's really exciting me. For those of you who watch my channel, you know that I love the company Arillic. They make some amazing whole house audio sound systems and amplifiers, and they use the highest quality chips. I just love them. But this is their first foray into bookshelf speakers, and I'm kind of excited about what they do because Arillic always uses high quality parts, and this is no exception. When we take a look at the woofer, you're gonna see that it is actually a glass fiber woofer, which is one of my favorite types of woofers uh, that you can use. On top of that, on their tweeter, instead of using like a fabric dome tweeter, they went with a Heel AMT tweeter, which does give you a lot higher of a response. And because it is an AMT tweeter, it also has a low moving mass, which means that it should start and stop much faster than a traditional tweeter. And it gives you a little bit more airiness as it can extend further in the frequency range than a typical tweeter usually can. On top of that, if we take a look at the veneer that they chose, they chose a real hardwood oak veneer. This isn't that vinyl stuff that you see on everything. In fact, if you look closely, you can actually see the wood grain in this. It's really beautiful. And it really does keep that natural beauty of the oak wood. I really love it. On the back, the quality just continues with this really nice port that they put back here and it is rounded over to help with port noise and i will tell you through all of my tests that i listened to i did not hear any type of port noise at all if we also look on the back they do have insulated binding posts and those binding posts are copper binding posts so we know that they use good quality parts and i teased you a little by saying you know, that arillic is doing something a little bit different than i've ever seen any other company doing let me tell you what that is. Arillic likes to cater to the DIY world with everything they do. And this is included with these. These woofers right here, if you wanna use them in a project, you can buy them directly from their site. They give all the specs of it. They give you the frequency response that you should uh, expect from it and everything that you need to be able to design a box with it. They also have a five and a quarter inch version of these. You can buy those as well, as well as two different AMT tweeters that they offer for sale on their website. Now don't worry about finding these. I'm gonna go ahead and link everything in the description of the video so it'll be easy for you to find, including the already built bookshelf speakers. So I gotta say, I'm actually pretty impressed with the fact that they're tailoring to the DIY community. But I also like the fact that not everyone wants to do DIY. And so you wanna look into a set of nice bookshelf speakers. So I did do some tests on these because I wanted to know just how well they actually did test. And I gotta say, I was actually kind of surprised with the results um, for a couple reasons. First, if we take a look at the on-axis response, we're gonna see that it does have the response with an increasing high end. Uh, and that, that definitely does lean to the high end. And I'm assuming that they just kind of want to show off the AMT a little. It does give it more of an airiness and openness that some people will really enjoy. In fact, a lot of people when they very first listen to speakers that have a rising high end like that, uh, find it to be pleasant and hear notes that they don't typically hear in speakers. But sometimes that can become fatiguing to some people as well. So I wanted to make sure that it didn't make any big difference when we put on the grill, which by the way, is a magnetic grill. Can't even see the magnets underneath that, which is pretty cool. And it snaps into place perfectly every time. I love that sound, it sounds so good. Anyway, I didn't notice any big difference. It was a very, very minor difference in the high end frequency response with the grill on or off. So you could listen to these either way and I don't know that you would notice any difference in the actual sound. Now, the first thing I wanted to test was the off axis response. And this does get you about plus or minus 30 degrees off axis pretty well. Once you go past the 30 degree mark, we start seeing some abnormalities in the frequency response. And honestly, by 45 degrees, we do have a pretty big dip, which looks to appears to be happening right around the crossover frequency. And that does appear that maybe they crossed over the six and a half inch a little bit later than probably they should, ha should have. Now I did listen to these and I did find them to be a little bit bright when I first got them on. Uh, and I, I wasn't as big a fan. They, they kind of sounded a little muddy. I wanted to fine-tune them. So I did hook up my SMSL AO200 MK2 amplifier where I can adjust the bass and the treble. I turned the bass up about one and the treble down about three. And that's when it really came alive to me. And that AMT tweeter is a really nice addition and I would like to maybe 
use some in some projects because I think they did it did sound good. Now that we've tested, let's give you some final thoughts. First of all, the bass response actually goes down pretty deep and sounds pretty good. I was actually surprised with the amount of bass. But the way that these are tuned, especially with that uh, narrower kind of 30 degree off axis, these are designed more for someone that's going to be a one seat tune or two seat tune, someone that has basically a very narrow listening area where you're not trying to fill up a bunch of seats. I wouldn't recommend these to anyone trying to fill up a whole room, so to speak, or someone that's walking around a lot while listening. Now, I want to give you some behind the scenes knowledge from like a speaker designer on a bookshelf speaker. Now, with a bookshelf speaker, there's a couple different ways you can tune a bookshelf speaker. One of the ways that you can tune a bookshelf speaker is what we call a full baffle step uh, compensation circuit. Basically, what that means is that we assume that you're going to be using this in an anechoic type environment. You're going to be using this on speaker stands, and we design it to give you a nice, flat, even response because of that. Now, we noticed that this particular speaker didn't have that. Uh, the other way that we can design that is what we call a half baffle step compensation, which basically means uh, that we believe that you're going to take your speaker and you're going to stick it actually on something else, like an actual bookshelf or a table or something. And because of that, you're going to get a bass and mid-range increase and uh, up to about three decibels, and that would help even out the speaker. Because of that, I think that this particular speaker would actually sound best not on speaker stands. In fact, I think this would sound best if you were going to put it on a table of some kind. If you're going to have it on speaker stands, you're going to probably want to EQ it, at least in my personal opinion, unless you just really love that high end. Now, having said that, one of the issues that I find with this speaker is that they cross it over too high. They cross this over at about... It looks to be like right around 3,500, somewhere in that, that range. I didn't do a um, specific test to find the exact crossover point. But because of that, that's a crossover point that's just a little too high for that six and a half inch. But having looked at the data of the actual um, AMT tweeter, I think that's really where they had to cross it over with. They just really couldn't. Uh, ideally, we would have liked to see that crossover a little bit lower, closer to 2,500 hertz, maybe even lower than that if we could, to get a wider off-axis coverage and more of a speaker that I personally would have enjoyed and then probably lowered that high end a little. As it stands, this really isn't the speaker that I personally love. Um, it's just not really designed for me. I'm more of a person that likes to move around when I'm listening to my music. Uh, I'm not really sitting in just necessarily in one seat enjoying it all the time. But if that's you, then maybe these are speakers that you might enjoy. In general, though, I love a Relic, right? I think they're a great company. In fact, they have what I think is going to be maybe the best value amplifier on the market. Subscribe if you want to see that, because that's going to be really cool. I'll send a sneak preview link down in the description. But having said that, I don't really care for these speakers. This is the first thing that Aurelic has made that I'm just not really a big fan of. And I'm not saying that there's not a market for these speakers. There probably is. It's just not me. All right, guys, I want to know your opinion and your thoughts on these speakers. What do you think about them having seen them? Let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.